This video is sponsored by Surfshark. In today's episode, I am going to build a low pump. Just a little spoiler, it worked pretty well. The working principle of the low pump is pretty simple. The pump has two rotors, one rotate clockwise and other counterclockwise. If those two rotors rotate, it creates a low pressure zone on the inlet side of the water pump. Water will be trapped between rotors and the water pump housing, and the rotational movement of the rotors moves the water to the outlet side of the water pump, creating high pressure zone. Because the water is not compressible and high pressure moves always to the low pressure, it will be discharged back to the low pressure by the outlet. The working principle of the low pump is exactly the same as the external gear pump, but the low pump design is way more complicated. Those low rotors are not gears, they will never touch each other, and they are driven independently. To achieve this, we need one pair of timing gears. For this video, I designed one and I will 3D print, build and test this. By the way, this model is completely free for you to download, so if you wanna build this by yourself, you have the option. But for now, let's get this video started. Every project starts with 3D printing. Actually, with the design that takes most of the time, but the video starts with 3D printing. Pump housing and other body parts I 3D printed with Creality Sermon D1 and for filament I use PLA+. Plus. I used my GD Deck X Plus for timing gears and for the bump rotors. For those parts I use ABS. I choose ABS especially for rotors because it can handle friction way better than PLA. If lot of friction happens, ABS start wearing, but PLA start melting. Melting bad, wear also bad, but way better than melting. Anyway, those rotors turned out really nice. I test assembled those and the clearances between those two rotors were too small. I printed another pair and now the clearances are fine but far from perfect. Those clearances are important in this project and this level of accuracy can only print resin printers. So this is exactly what I did. I 3D printed another pair of rotors with my Nova 3D Veil 2. I 3D printed those straight to the boiling platform. Usually in this type of case you should give them around 45 degree tilt and use shitload of supports. But those supports connection points leave this little spot behind and I didn't want to have those at all on my rotors. That's why I did it how I did it. The biggest downside with this is this enormous elephant foot that happened because of the first layer will expose like 10 times longer than the rest of the layers. But I knew this will happen. This is not a big problem because racing printed parts are just so easy to sand. So yeah, I wet sanded those little imperfections. And now I have two perfect rotors. I am ready to assemble the water pump. First, I removed all supports. I breastfeed a two six one six six one six one eight zero six RS bearings to the bottom of the water pump housing. Next, I push two rotors through them. By the way, the most important thing is to line those lobes absolutely perfectly. I designed those rotors and timing gears foolproof. I mean it's not possible to mess this up if the holes and few little extrusions on the both of the gears will line up. Let me show you closely. First, those two guts at the bottom of the rotors are to have any idea how they have to position in the water pump. If those two guts line up, we can add the gears. Both of the gears have four holes for the M4 bolts. One of them has slight offset. By the way, those two gears are different models and have different offset for this one hole. So you cannot coaccidentally screw the wrong gear to the wrong rotor. But the most important thing is to make sure that those two lines on the gears will line up. If they don't and have even little offset, the lobe will fail, two rotors crash to each other and the pump will not work. So if all the lines and holes are lined up perfectly, it's time to screw those gears to the rotors by using M4 40mm bolts. Sadness happened. Like we see, I have done little measurement error and those bolts won't screw all the way in. Right now I leave it like it is and hope it won't cause any problems. Now when the most important parts of this water pump are successfully installed, we can see that they rotate almost perfectly. Those rotors got a little bit stuck. It's because they touch each other at some point. But it shouldn't be a problem, because resin printed parts wear in really quickly. And it's completely normal that these type of things happen because the gap between those two rotors are really small. Just saying, real low pump rotors, they are insanely well machined and they never touch each other. But the water pump isn't ready yet. We have to install shafts, lead, outlet and inlet house nozzles. But before we do that, big thank today's video sponsor, Surfshark. 
Surfshark VPN is an app and browser extension that basically lets you place virtually to the other location. This helps you to access the content or websites that aren't available in your country. For example, Netflix. Netflix in Europe is way different than in US. If you want to watch TV shows or movies that aren't available in your country, but are for example in UK, just place yourself there with Surfshark and enjoy. Also, using VPN like Surfshark make your internet more secure by masking your IP address and making your internet safer from hackers and trackers, especially important when you are using public Wi-Fi. Surfshark has more than 3200 servers in 65 countries. Anywhere you go, you will find a server that fits for your needs. And those servers are 100% RAM only. All the information that would usually be on the hard drive is automatically deleted whenever a server is turned off. If you are interested, you probably are, use the link on the description and enter my promo code Let's Print. You will get 83% off plus 3 months completely free. So don't miss the chance. But for now, let's continue with the bump. Next I installed inlet and outlet hose nozzles. By the way, I didn't screw hose nozzles straight to the bump. I used those outer thread things. Actually for due reason. I wanted to have an option to change hose nozzles if, for example, my outlet nozzle diameter is too small or too big. It just make it way easier. And I didn't have outer threaded hose nozzles laying around. I also used threaded seal tape to make those leak proof. This didn't actually work. Reason for this is really simple. Those holes for those threads are a bit too big and they are pretty loose. Spoiler, I will fix this later and then it did work. Next, I need two M8 times 150 cm shafts. When I install the shafts, I always say fit is really tight and it's have to be. But this fit is too tight and I really struggled to get those through. One got so stuck that I had to cut this shorter. Sadly, I also damaged one rotor. When I managed to get at least one shaft successfully in, I secured the gear to the shaft with three M6 set screws. Now lead. There are two holes for 806 RS bearings, but I didn't get one shaft all the way through, so I use only one. The other one is absolutely not necessary, in my case. The lead fits to the water pump absolutely perfectly, but one really strange thing happened. Bolt holes didn't line up. It's really strange because this type of thing isn't easy to mess up. I literally checked what the hell I have done to make this happen. And even more strange is that in GAD it's absolutely perfect. This remains mystery to this day. At this point I leave it like it is and I screw the gear cover section on. Something that shouldn't cause any problems. But it did. Remember those bolts didn't screw all the way through. Now they're up against the wall. I had to fix this, so I drive to my closest hardware store. My plan was to change 40mm bolts to 35mm bolts. They should work also, but there was only 30mm bolts. Not ideal, but it worked. Just saying, in GAD I already fixed this, so if you print this model, you can use M4 times 40 mm bolts. My blood pressure was pretty high, thank you for asking, I'm fine. I rushed outside because I still hadn't any clue about how well or even will this water pump work. And then... It worked, and honestly speaking, it worked way better than I expected. But it did leak, and I tried to fix this. That's why I printed a new bump housing where I fixed those little bit too big holes for hose nozzles. And I also made room for this type of rubber rings. Long story short, I disassembled the water bump and I assembled everything again with couple of changes. Plus for experiment, I now use FTM printed rotors. I'm back outside to continue testing. And now the water pump just didn't start. 
It took me painfully long time to understand that I'm running this water pump wrong way. And another problem. This shaft started rotating inside the gear, so it didn't turn the rotors. I fixed this by using the other shaft that didn't slip. It's working just fine, but it still leaks. The good news is, it's happening only where the bottom of the rotor is coming out from the water bomb. But the bad news is, it leaks there pretty bad. And now you see the most pointless attempt to wash a car. Anyway, this pump worked pretty well. Of course there was a couple of things that didn't go according to the plan. Well I was hoping it leaks a bit less. And I also bring the rest of the body bars of my design. And I took my 895 DC motor out from my devil shop. That I built by myself. But like you just saw, I used my drill to run the water pump. While doing this, I felt that one 985 DC motor won't have enough power to run this water pump. That's why I didn't finish this part of the build. But I have something that is capable of running this water pump. By the way, I am going to build this water pump again, but it will be way more improved. Also, instead of those two low rotors, I am going to use B-wing rotors. I am already working with this video and I believe this will be dope. If you don't wanna miss this, make sure you hit this subscribe button. If you already speak about subscribing, one thing I forget to mention before. The lead looks like this because I plan to write here 100,000 subscribers. But I am not there yet. Let's hope I can do this next time. But okay, this video is over now. Big thank you for watching and big thank you for supporting me from the Patreon and hitting this like and subscribe and notification bell and see you guys really soon. Bye.